Mars. It's red, it's quiet, it has 24.5 hour days, an average temperature of negative 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and 144 trillion square meters of land area. And a lot of scientists in both the government and the private sector want to go there. But why? What is the reason that Mars is so interesting to people from Neil deGrasse Tyson to Tesla Motors Elon Musk? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time we ask the question, why are we working to colonize Mars? So Mars doesn't really seem like a hospitable, wonderful place to live that I personally think the view is even satisfactory. I mean, it's kind of just a bunch of land that's the same color with a bunch of space above it. I'm sure in its own way it's beautiful somewhere, but for me, I don't know, I kind of like Earth. But the reason that we would colonize Mars has nothing to do with me, or you, or anybody else living a life that has nothing to do with the sustainability and advancement of the human race. Or the avian race. I'm Falcon. <laughs> But there are a lot of people that are a lot more concerned with things like that. And let's go ahead and say if we had a colony of people living on Mars and a dinosaur killer came out of the sky and, well, sent us the way of the dinosaurs, there would still be people. I mean, I'm not saying that nobody could survive the same kind of catastrophe that the dinosaurs all died off in. We're certainly a little bit smarter and there are people that are very obsessed with surviving in literally any circumstance. They've got bunkers, they've got food, and if a meteor or clover field happened outside, they'd be prepared. Still, having a plan B planet with the means to keep humanity from dying out isn't the worst thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. But it's not the only reason. It's certainly an appealing one, but there are other more, well, monetary reasons. I mentioned Neil deGrasse Tyson and something that he often goes on about is that every single dollar invested in NASA, in space exploration, and attempts at furthering humanity's reach throughout the universe universe there's around a $14 return on that dollar. Now, where does that return come from? It seems like it might be a little bit absurd to say throwing money into space yields a return. Well, not so much. There's a great many number of things that have come specifically from space research that help us in our everyday lives in a way that we don't even think about in 2017. For instance, a program to develop rocket noses, the front of the rocket, the very tip, the area that cuts through whatever atmosphere we're dealing with, the area that hits radiation first, the area that generates a lot of heat when traveling through any sort of fluid atmosphere. That program developed the type of materials that Pyrex Bakeware is made from. In fact, not just the materials, but the techniques that temper those materials that make it possible for it to be used in such a way. WD-40 came out of an initiative to create a material that could displace water. In fact, that's what its name comes from. WD-40 means Water Displacement 40th Attempt. And now you can get it for like $1.60. But as far as talking about the economic benefits of going to Mars, it's not just a boom in innovation that would happen, though that certainly would, materials on Mars are extremely plentiful. For instance, if nuclear fusion is ever a mobile or just regular power source, we're going to need a lot of deuterium. And there's five times more of it on Mars than there is here. In fact, there's a significant number of metals and minerals that are a lot more plentiful on Mars than they are on Earth. It wouldn't just be the materials that we manufacture into things themselves, but also the manufacturing process would be different on Mars. In fact, much more hospitable to advanced materials. For instance, did you know that aluminum can actually be made into glass? When it's made into glass, it's perhaps one of the absolute most durable clear materials in existence. It's bulletproof, for instance. You can do it on Earth, but it costs a lot of money because the way gravity affects its creation, you have to come up with ways to do it where that's taken out of the equation. On Mars, the gravity is 2.4 times less than it is on Earth. There's a possibility they could mass produce aluminum glass there. And while tempered silicon glass has gotten much, much better than it used to be, and you see less phones shattered all to hell, 
they haven't entirely disappeared. If that's what we were doing, it's possible that they would. I'm not even sure if you can shatter aluminum glass. I know you could probably destroy it in one way or another, but just dropping it on something probably wouldn't scratch or shatter it in any way. And I think no one would be pissed off to never have to have a case on their phone. I certainly wouldn't. I like my phone to be small and caseless, but I've broken more than enough of them to know I can't do that. <laughs> yes, a sarcastic laugh. What I'm saying is that industry in almost every aspect would explode in a way that has never happened before. You can say that going to the moon definitely did advance our technology, just because people were inspired and all got behind a specific idea, a goal, and everyone got behind it. Everyone wanted to make it there. Everyone wanted to invest in it and be something more. And people got inspired by that. People who don't normally think outside of their own little bubbles. Now I know Neil deGrasse Tyson has his own set of problems and is often a killjoy regarding certain things, but he does say things that I think are inspiring and cool. You just have to take him as a human being and allow him to be flawed. The things that he says that are productive are most certainly productive. And I'm going to repeat one right now. No one on the planet cares about making something that's 20% more fuel efficient. That's just not anybody's goal. Well, except for executives and designers and engineers and people who make lots of money to stay in their office all day and talk about specifically that. But the entire country is never going to be excited about 20% better jets. Most people wouldn't even know that it happened when it did, if it did. But if everybody knew all the benefits of striving to go to Mars, if everyone knew all of the development we would get even if we failed to get there, if everyone knew that this kind of common cause would improve not only the lives of many people in the world, but their own lives with products and services that would most likely make everyone's life easier, I think people might get behind that. I feel like it, it's possible people might see that as a good idea. Let's go to Mars. And no, he didn't say it like that exactly. That's kind of my way of saying it. But the point that he made, I believe in pretty heavily. Certainly there are political motivations. Certainly there are industrial motivations. There's the motivation of survival. There's curiosity. There's two sides of a coin, both profit and altruism. Just about everybody from every walk of life should be interested in going to Mars for one reason or another. Personally, profit isn't necessarily the thing that makes me too excited about it, but I know it'll get us there. So if that's what has to happen, that's what has to happen. Cause that shit's gonna be good. I promise. Now there's a million other reasons we should be going to Mars, and a million other reasons we should care about space exploration, and I think that we should try to cover every single one of them in the comments. I'll meet you there. Let's make some sort of attempt. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. It helps us immensely, and if you are not subscribed, please do so right now. I think you'll find that the videos we upload all the time here at Waste Time are not a waste of time, but are a good way to waste some time. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time, right here on Waste Time.